hey, there are seven investments that the government will actually pay you to make people hate paying taxes. There's one activity where if you do it, and this is a common activity, it's so incentivized that it's rare for anyone to ever pay tax on it, and you'll see why. The fastest way for you to increase your personal income is to lower your tax rate. Hey, leave a like on this if you like the content of what we're talking about today. I'd really appreciate the YouTube like. By the end of this video, you're gonna know about all that we're discussing here and more as I bring in and discuss it with expert and author Tom we right now this week's guest is the founder of WealthAbility. he helps you permanently and legally reduce your taxes his book tax-free wealth has been a bestseller for 10 years and he's the author of a new book the win-win wealth strategy seven investments the government will pay you to make and he doesn't need much of an introduction because he is the most recurrent guest in show history welcome back to get rich education the terrific Tom we right Thanks, Keith. Always good to be with you guys and your listeners. Tom, the reason that you're most recurrent guest that, that we've ever had here is because you're one of the very few people that can make taxes entertaining. And it's also really informative. Like I learn quite a bit from you on these shows, I think much like our viewers and listeners do, because I'm just not going to keep up with the minutes of Congress or the latest on the House Ways and Means Committee or wherever a lot of this policy comes from. But your book, The Win-Win Wall Strategy, has such an interesting subtitle, The Seven Investments That the Government Will Pay You to Make. So tell us about those. The government actually gets more out of it than the taxpayer. So the fact that the government's giving incentives, this is not a loophole. These are not things that are unintentional. The government is actually making money on it. John F. Kennedy, back in the early 60s, uh, did a test and he said, if we give an incentive at that time, it was for manufacturing equipment. If we give a small tax incentive, will we get more uh, manufacturing equipment placed in service? That was really the goal. They wanted they, that we were in a bit of a recession, wanted to simulate manufacturing and lo and behold, it worked. And I, I think it's pretty obvious as why it worked is because people hate paying taxes. So there's an emotional response to it, not just a monetary response to it. And so when I look at taxes, I'm going, okay, so by the way, that's why it's tax-free wealth because that's an emotional topic, right? Um, but what most people think is, if the government wins, I'm going to lose. And the only way for me to win is to cheat. And so people who make a lot of money and pay little tax, they must be cheating. That would be the, the rich, right? That's why this whole thing about tax the rich. When in fact, that's not how the tax law works. Um, the, the way the tax law works is, yes, the government will always win. But you can win also if you do what the government wants done. Because there are so many incentives seven specific uh, areas of the economy, where if you invest directly into those incentives, the government will literally pay you by reducing other taxes, they'll pay you to make that investment. So um, that's kind of the idea behind it, Keith. And, uh, and, and then uh, I would say, you know, the second idea is uh, you, you really have a choice. You can be a silent um, partner with the government, you can be an active partner with the government, but the fact is you're a partner with the government. So just choose which one you're going to be. You're going to be a silent partner, pay a lot of tax, or an active partner and pay very little tax. So I think we all want to be an active partner. And since the subtitle of your book is Seven Investments That the Government Pays You to Make, I know that three of those are, are classics, investing in food, housing, or energy. Tell us about some of those other seven investments that the government will pay you to make. Well, here, uh, business is number one. Business is by far, and this is around the world. So we looked at 15 different countries. We actually have 150 endnotes for 15 different countries. So uh, the last 40 pages of the book, the last 60 pages of the book are endnotes to just actually show where we got our information. Um, and what it turns out that business is the most incentivized um, by governments throughout the world. So business is very important. The, uh, the second most incentivized is besides agriculture would probably be agriculture, but then you would have real estate. Real estate's a very highly incentivized whether it's housing, commercial property, et cetera. And uh, as long as you add debt to it. Now, real estate gets tax incentives, whether you have debt or not, but those that debt can multiply those incentives and it multiplies the tax benefits by three, four or five times, uh, depending on how 
how much debt you put, how much debt you use, you can multiply your uh, your tax benefits simply by using other people's money. So, um, you know, those are a few. Technology is another one that people don't typically think about. But if you think about, okay, now who are the richest people in the world who haven't paid tax for the last 20 years? Well, that would be Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk, both high in the technology world. Um, the reason that Amazon and Tesla uh, didn't pay tax for the first 20 years of their existence is because of tax incentives. That's the reason. So yes, they lost money in the early years, but then they had research and development tax credits um, to pay um, for it, even when they were making money so that they actually paid little or no tax. Now you brought up the names of a couple of famous, really wealthy people. And there seems to be this sentiment out there. I don't know whether it's growing or not, but it's awfully pervasive. And that is one where people say tax the rich. And a lot of times the people that say that, I don't know if they have a complete understanding of how capitalism and economies work. I mean, you're talking about entrepreneurs here that took on risk themselves in order to create a job for you and create value for you. I doubt that there's anybody who owns a home who doesn't deduct their mortgage interest. I'm sure they all do. Right. Well, right. that's a tax incentive. I'm sure there's nobody who sends their kids to college who doesn't take the, the um, education tax credits. So it's very disingenuous for people to say, well, the rich get these incentives and their incentives are bad. My incentives are okay. Right. So, for example, the, the, the last incentive that I look at um, in the book is uh, retirement plans. Well, retirement plans, I think there isn't a soul on the planet that thinks, oh, this is a really bad idea. Oh, no, this the, I mean, we shouldn't give tax benefits for, for saving for retirement. No, everybody is OK with that. That, interestingly enough, is the one investment that the government will pay you to make where the government doesn't make money on it. The government actually pretty much breaks even, um, at least according to the numbers that I ran. Okay. So, uh, you know, you can say, that, you know, the rich should pay more tax. I'm going, well, first of all, the rich pay all the tax. Okay. So the poor don't pay any tax. 50% um, of Americans pay uh, little or absolutely zero tax. And uh, the tax rates are such where you really have to make pretty good income to pay tax at all. And you could be making $100,000, $200,000 a year and still pay very little tax. So um, I, I think it's very disingenuous, frankly. This is why I wrote the book, because I felt like we needed to have this conversation. Um, we need to kind of point out to the world that, um, okay, uh, if, if somebody's very wealthy and they don't pay any tax, it's probably not because they're cheating. Now, are there rich people who cheat? I'm guessing there, there might be, but I will tell you this. Um, rich people always have, almost always have CPAs and CPAs don't cheat. It's not in our makeup. Uh, we would lose our license over it. We would lose our livelihood. Uh, CPAs are the most honest people I know. And um, so, you know, to say that the rich cheat is to basically throw the CPA profession under the bus and say, well, you're either, com you're either com um, uh, complicit in the rich cheating or you're stupid. Okay. So I take exception to both of those um, because I think that most CPAs are, are, are pretty smart people and they're doing their best um, and they're following the law. And so these are, again, these are incentives. These are strategies that the government says, if you employ these strategies, we're going to contribute um, if you don't employ the strategies, we're fine too. We're happy to take your tax. Now, I know one of the seven investments government pays you to make, I touched on it with the food before, is with agriculture. We talk about agricultural real estate here sometimes. And the government's incentivizing basically people to provide the country with food security. Okay, that's a condition that exists back before what happened to the world in 2020. And you can think about how much more important was supply chain disruptions and everything else that food security is for a country with these agricultural incentives persisting. Oh, absolutely. You have, agri you have, you have uh, agricultural incentives like that. Energy incentives work the same way, right? It's it's energy security, right? It's actually security for the, for the nation. Uh, uh, the economy runs on energy. So that's why energy, whether it's fossil fuel energy or whether it's renewable fuel energy, it's, um, it's highly incentivized, right? Agriculture is so incentivized 
that I've, I've literally don't recall a situation where I had a client that was in agriculture that paid tax. Amazing. And, and it's just, I mean, when you think about it, you go, I mean, do we really want our farmers to spend the, their money on tax? Or do we want them reinvesting the money in food? You don't have a lot, whole lot of what you think of, oh, well, farmer, you must be rich. <laughs> right? That's not really the, that's not the visual that comes, right? When we True. think about farmers, we think about them in overalls, um, you know, uh, harv- harvesting in October, right? That's what we think of. Sure. I thought about and, his Bezos differently than the farmer. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But Bezos is the one who brings it to you. So, you know, the reality is, is that, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, are there, are there wealthy uh, people in agriculture? Absolutely. And some of those do pay tax, but the average uh, farmer or rancher is going to pay very little tax because the tax incentives are so high. We're talking with Tom Wheelwright. He's the author of the new book called The Win-Win Wealth Strategy, Seven Investments That the Government Will Pay You to Make. He's going to tell us about how you can potentially buy a Ferrari, all with tax write-offs. You're listening to Get Rich Education. I'm your host, Keith Weinhold. Americans are not saving for retirement. It's going to get worse as people live longer, so you need to think differently, but you can't lose your time. Real estate is the investment vehicle that has created more million and billionaires than anything else. Get Rich Education is one of America's top investing shows disrupting Wall Street. Your host, Keith Weinhold, is a true financial educator and has been an income property investor since 2002. Get Rich Education has created millions in passive monthly income for its followers. Now, Keith is a free course. Real estate pays five ways. Sign up now at getricheducation.com forward slash course. Invest in what produces income for you now and later. Use the link in the description to take the course for free. Real estate pays five ways. Get Rich Education is on every podcasting platform and has its own native iOS and Android apps. Join Get Rich Education Nation to create financial freedom through real estate investing. Subscribe wherever you listen. Welcome back to Get Rich Education. We're talking with Wealth Abilities' Tom Wheelwright. He's the author of a fresh new book called The Win-Win Wealth Strategy, Seven Investments That the Government Will Pay You to Make. I know, Tom, that you have a story about, in a sense, how someone paid for a Ferrari legally with the government's money. Tell us about that. Yeah. So, um, so it actually started, um, the, the first time I, I, I looked at this was actually a Porsche, not a Ferrari. And this was uh, Robert Kiyosaki. We were in Santiago, Chile a number of years ago. And he actually asked me, he says, can you teach him how to deduct a Porsche? And, uh, I said, well, it, cause Porsches aren't deductible in Chile, just FYI. And so we, we, we got up and, and we actually showed how uh, his Porsche, um, the government actually was paying him to buy that Porsche. And I'm going, well, if it works with a Porsche, it probably works with a Ferrari. Sure. And so I, I've got a, a, a friend who's a very public client of mine, Brad Sumrock, and yeah. you probably know in the real estate industry, great real estate educator like yourself. And uh, I knew Brad wanted to buy a Ferrari. And I said, Brad, so let's look at how do we get the government to pay for your Ferrari? And so we actually looked at, um, okay, where the, where he could put his money so that the tax incentives were enough to pay for that down payment and that the ongoing payments would be, would be paid for with his investment. So we looked at it, we ran the numbers, and sure enough, um, the government, literally is paying for his freight. I mean, it is going on right now. He's, he's still making payments on it and the government is paying for it. We have a picture of he and his uh, wife, uh, adorable wife, Jen, um, with their Ferrari in the book. These are real numbers that we used. Um, and pretty much a lot of times in the book, I did use real numbers, including with the Ferrari. It's not that the government wants you to buy a Ferrari. It's just that the government so much wants you to do these other things. For Brad, it was real estate. Somebody else, it might be business. Somebody else, it might be um, energy or agriculture. But they so much want you to do it. The Literally, the tax savings are sufficient to go out and buy yourself a Ferrari, a beach home, a Tesla, whatever else you want. That's an amazing testimony about how there's not a low ceiling on these investments that you can make and the resultant benefits that you get from them. Donald Trump is certainly... One of the things he's famous for is his tax situation, right? He said in yeah. 2016, when he, uh, Hillary Clinton accused him not paying taxes, that it was because he was smart. 
Um, rich people all have good tax advisors. They don't have to understand the law so much because they have really good tax advisors to understand the law. But then fast forward in 2020, uh, the New York Times um, actually got a hold of his tax returns for 15 years and showed that 10 out of 15, he didn't pay tax at all. Okay. In two years, he paid, I think, $750 in each of those years, which, you know, wow. to me is his, his accountant should have been fired for that. But um, in any case, but, but why? And in fact, in, in one year, um, I don't know if he still is in this, this lawsuit with the IRS, but in one year, he actually got a $72 million refund. Okay. So how do you get a $72 million refund? Well, he paid a bunch of tax on his earnings from the apprentice. And then he invested that money into his real estate business. And as a result, he got a tax refund. Uh, okay. So this is something, yes, the rich do this all the time, but it doesn't mean just because the rich do it. There's also not a floor. You said there's not a ceiling. There's also not a floor. Okay. So the average person who buys a single family home or a duplex or a fourplex can also get the same tax benefits that got Donald Trump a $72 million refund, they may get you a $7,200 refund, or they may get you a $72,000 refund. But in any case, um, you know, it's very tax, it's, it, we call it tax effective investing because not only are you not paying tax on the income, for example, from your real estate, but you're also not paying tax on your wages that you used in order to buy the real estate. And I, I just think that that's a little bit of magic. And we just need to recognize whether you like it or not, that's the way the tax law works. And uh, politicians love to use the tax law because they love having the power of taxation, which is their number one power. And they use it for um, good and evil. And in this case, it's a win-win for both the taxpayer and the government. And this can be rather head spinning for the ordinary person because the ordinary person, they think about taxes differently and their income is treated differently because most people, you can think of it as they actually pay their taxes first. It's knocked out of their paycheck. They do. They've got, they got FICA. I mean, it's like, it's like that great um, episode of Friends early on, first season of Friends where Rachel gets her first paycheck and she says, I can't believe I got this paycheck. I worked for this. I, I waited tables for this. I bust tables for this. And it was totally not worth it. Who's FICA? And, <laughs> and I mean, it's one of my favorite clips of any show because she's illustrating that, look, we're all partners with the government. And most people are silent partners and they get the taxes taken out first. And there are those who choose like following Get Rich Education, um, that they actually choose to be active partners with the government. And the government just says, we'll give you a choice. You can be a silent partner, pay a lot of tax. You can be an active partner and pay little or no tax. Now, chapter four of your new book, that focuses on real estate. And oftentimes one doesn't understand until they become a real estate investor that, oh, my income, my rental income is taxed differently than my income from my day job. In fact, I pay a different effective tax rate on those two things. For example, one's day job income often has FICA, social security tax knocked out of it and rental income does not. So talk to us about the difference in tax rate between income from a day job versus that from rental income. Yeah, for sure. Rental income is not subject to social security taxes. So that's 12.3% that you're not paying. 12.3%. That's a that's big a deal. Big dollar. I mean, for a lot of people, that's more than their income tax rate. So uh, consider that. On top of that, with depreciation, you're probably not paying income tax either. So you're not paying Social Security tax and you're not paying income tax. Whereas with your job, you're paying both income tax and Social Security tax. So it, it is there. You know, we always say that the very first thing to look at with a when a new client comes to us is, how are you using your money? If you're spending it or saving it, you're probably going to pay tax on it. But if you reinvest it, um, particularly into real estate, agriculture, uh, business technology, if you reinvest it, you're not going to pay tax on it. So it's very much a choice that every one of us has the opportunity to make once we learn that we have that choice. Now, your book touches on tax depreciation. You mentioned depreciation. I think a lot of people still don't understand the depreciation benefit for real estate investors. Tell us about it. You know, you're just getting a deduction for the wear and tear on your uh, building, but it's not 
just the building itself, because remember, you also bought the land improvements, such as the, um, <laughs> now in my case, um, uh, landscaping doesn't last very long because I will kill it. Okay. My <laughs> wife, it will last longer, but the government says it's going to last about 15 years. Same, same with your covered parking, same with your outdoor lighting, things like that. Those are land improvements, about 15 years. So instead of over 27 and a half or, thir or 39 years, like you would have to do with a building, you get to deduct it faster. And then the contents of the building, we all know, especially you have a, a <laughs> renters uh, tend to, uh, you know, be harsh on the contents of, a, of, uh, of, your, of your building. And so the government says, well, that's probably going to last anywhere from five to seven years. That's, that's the most. What happened in 2017, though, is the government said, okay, for the next few years, um, we're going to allow you to deduct 100% of both your land improvements and the contents of your building in the year you buy the building and place it into service. So a, a lot of times that can be 20, 30% of your purchase price if you get a, a professional cost segregation person to, to do a cost segregation on it. That's a lot of money. That means you could put down $100,000 on a $500,000 building and get a $100,000 deduction in the very first, the, the day you close on the building. Amazing. Uh, the huge, huge number and all... Not many countries have that kind of a tax benefit for real estate. It is an enormous benefit. And people should realize also that we have a little window of opportunity right now because that benefit starts going, starts diminishing in 2023. So 2023, it goes down to 80%, 2024, 60%, and then 2025 and after that, 50%. So we do have a window of opportunity right now. If you're thinking about what do I do with my money to keep up with inflation, real estate might be a good option. Okay. We're talking about the bonus depreciation benefit, sun setting over time. Tom, why don't you talk to us about just the basic depreciation benefit? Maybe it's easiest to use an example of say a $140,000 rental property where the improved portion of the property is worth 100K and the land is worth 40K. How does tax depreciation work? Well, again, your 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 bonus depreciation, you're probably going to get about twenty thousand of that, twenty to twenty five thousand right off the bat. But then remember, you still got the building, and let's say your building is fifty percent of that, or uh, fifty thousand dollars. Well, that means that um, you're going to get about three and a half percent a year on that fifty thousand dollars, which is about seventeen or fifty dollars every year. You're going to get a get a deduction for seven hundred and fifty dollars, even if the building is perfectly good after 27 and a half years. So it doesn't matter whether it actually wears out. You, you get the deduction. And by the way, it doesn't matter if it's a new building or a used building. Uh, the US is unusual that way. Uh, a lot of countries only give you depreciation once. That is on a new building, they give it to you, but on a used building, you don't get it. We actually can get depreciation over and over again because you can take depreciation. Then when you sell it to me, I can take depreciation. And because of 1031 exchanges, you don't necessarily have to pay tax on that, that gain. Sure. I still get the deduction. So we literally can take uh, depreciation deductions multiple times from multiple investors. And Tom, I like how in your book, you have a section on tax depreciation that I have never seen before. It's about how other nations in the world also have this benefit. Now, in the United States, we can depreciate our property between 27 and a half and 39 years. In your book, you have these nice at a glance tables where, for example, I could see in Spain, it takes you longer to depreciate that, meaning the benefit is not as good. It's 68 to 100 years in Spain, and then it's shorter in a place like Mexico, where it's between 10 and 20 years. Yeah. I mean, every country, you know, the details are different from country to country, which is why you have a good tax advisor, which is why at WealthAbility, we have a network of 60 CPA firms that we train to make sure that they have your back, right? Um, and so you do need somebody to help you with the details. I think what's critical is to understand the context and the concepts behind the tax law, because once we understand that, it changes our point of view. And we're able to say, well, wait a minute, if Jeff Bezos can get these benefits, why can't I? Um, if, uh, you know, if uh, Donald Trump can get these tax benefits, why can't I? And really the only difference is if you're not getting the benefits is because they have 
more education and better tax advisors than you do. But uh, the reality is, is that everybody can get them. Everybody gets these benefits. We have a constitution that means that if one person gets the benefit, everybody gets the benefit. Well, Tom, I know a lot of people have been looking forward to this book, which was just freshly published a few days ago, because so many people have gotten value from your first book a while back called Tax-Free Wealth. So is there any last thing that we ought to know about your new book, The Win-Win Wealth Strategy? You know, the more income you earn, the more tax you pay, but the more assets you you build, the more wealth you build, the less tax you pay. So Win-Win Wealth Strategy is very much a sequel um, and intended as a sequel to Tax-Free Wealth. So I would definitely be reading both of them. Um, you can read Win-Win Wealth without Tax-Free Wealth, but I suggest uh, both books. Um, the, you know, Tax-Free Wealth is basically a primer on reducing your taxes. Win-Win Wealth is a primer on building wealth. So um, why, not, why not make it a win-win? The, it, it doesn't have to be a win-lose. Uh, strategy when it comes to taxes, you can win and have, frankly, make way more money and pay way less tax. So you, the listener and the viewer here, maybe some great ways to increase your income or to buy a rental property or to get a promotion at work. And maybe you should do those things. But in addition to those things, perhaps the easiest way to increase your effective income is to reduce your taxes. And Tom's new book is a roadmap for that. Tom, tell our audience where they can get the new book. Uh, I, honestly, easiest way is Amazon.com. <laughs> go, go to Amazon. I am a big fan of Jeff Bezos because he <laughs> gets my book sold. And so Amazon is a really easy place. Uh, Barnes and Noble certainly would have it. Uh, Books a million, you know, any place. I mean, it's, it's published by Wiley, one of the largest publishers in the world. So it's going to be in every, every, any, pretty much any place you go, you're going to be able to find the book. But I would go to Amazon or uh, we do have a website, winwinwealthstrategy.com. And you're welcome to go there. But uh, frankly, Amazon is probably just as easy. There's Bezos creating value again. Again, the name of the book is The Win-Win Wealth Strategy, seven investments that the government will pay you to make. Tom, we're right. It's been valuable as always. Thanks so much for coming back onto the show. Thank you, Keith. I earned this. I wiped tables for it. I steamed milk for it. And it was totally not worth it. <laughs> Who's FICA? Why is he getting all my money? Oh.